Samsung has just launched the S24 Ultra and I've been having a play with it. So last week I was in Las Vegas for CES, which is why I look like this. And while I was there, I got to check out the S24 Ultra. I was also lucky enough to check it out in London earlier this week. So I've had lots of hands-on time with Samsung's latest flagship. And this year, predictably, it's all about AI, AI, AI and yes, AI. And just a little bit of AI sprinkled on top for good measure. And I think this year, Apple should be worried. I'll get onto why that's the case in a moment, but that is a brilliant segue into today's sponsor, which is Pitaka and these fantastic new cases for the S24 Ultra. This is the new Mag Easy Case 4 for the S24 Ultra. It's available in three designs, Black, Moonrise, and Sunset. It's made from Aramid fiber, and you can expect the usual loveliness from Pitaka when it comes to combining lightweight with a confident grip, gorgeous looks, and amazing protection for your brand new expensive S24 Ultra. Pitaka really is the pioneer of Aramid fiber cases, and they're the leading brand that utilizes fusion weaving technology to enhance the possibilities of this material. I've used Pitaka cases extensively on all of my Samsung S devices, and trust me, they look fantastic, they feel brilliant, and they give you that real confidence that if you drop your phone, if, you know, if the worst happens, it's gonna be okay. And on the Mag Easy Case 4, there's also a recycled Aramid fiber camera lip, which protects those all important lenses. And one of the best things about these Mag Easy cases is that they are MagSafe compatible, so you can effectively turn your S24 Ultra into a MagSafe device. So just like iPhone users, Samsung users can enjoy the snap and go and snap and charge experience. These are just some of the reasons Pitaka has sold over 1 million phone cases worldwide. Now you do have a bit of time before your shiny S24 Ultra arrives, so to avoid any heartbreak when you get it and drop it immediately, I'd get yourself one of these sharpish. To find out more, just click that link below. So you can pre-order the S24, the S24 Plus, and the S24 Ultra today, the 17th of January, and the devices will start arriving towards the end of the month. Today, I'm gonna to focus on the S24 Ultra, which starts at the same price as its predecessor. So in the UK, that is 1,249 pounds for 256 gigabytes. And I think the 512 gig version has had a 50 pound discount from the S23 Ultra. That starts at 1,349 pounds. And then if you want the range topping one terabyte version, you'll need to stumble up 1,549 quid. However, as always, Samsung is offering a few incentives if you pre-order, including double storage. So if you order the 256 gig version, you'll get the 512, and if you order the 512, you'll get the one terabyte. This year, the S24 Ultra is made from titanium, which sounds familiar, and it comes in four different shades. Gray, black, violet, and yellow. Moving on to the internal specs, and if you're in the UK and you've been worried about these rumors of the Exynos chip making a return, it has come back. However, it's in the S24 and the S24 Plus, whereas the S24 Ultra does get the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3. And if you're wondering, the Ultra has 12 gigabytes of RAM as standard, but let's get on to what matters. This is Samsung's first titanium smartphone, and it apparently offers up to 56% increases in durability. I've really enjoyed the iPhone 15 Pro Max's switch to titanium. I think it's an inspired choice by Apple. I can see why Samsung has done the same thing. In person, the S24 Ultra just feels lovely. It feels a bit lighter than the S23 Ultra. The bands, so the, the sides of the device and the top and the bottom of the device, are now brushed metal compared to the shiny metal that you get on the S23 Ultra, and for some reason, that immediately makes the S23 Ultra seem old-fashioned. That's not the only difference. The S24 Ultra also has a flat screen, so the sides are still curved, but the display itself is completely flat. Now, I'm not bothered about slightly curved displays. I quite like them, actually, but I can see why Samsung's done it. It's one of those things that has been mentioned a lot in reviews and on Reddit threads and all over the place, so it's nice to know that they're, you know, that they're listening and they will make changes. The S24 Ultra is also the first smartphone ever to feature Corning Gorilla Armor Glass, which is apparently four times more scratch resistant than the previous generation. Overall, the S24 Ultra doesn't look much different to the S23 Ultra, but that switch to titanium and those beefed up durability specs are massively welcome. This does remain one of the most impressive flagship smartphones on the market, and on that note, the display is, once again, an absolute triumph. It's Samsung's
Samsung's brightest ever display with 2,600 nits of peak brightness. And again, while it doesn't look massively different against the S23 Ultra, that's no bad thing because I still think that the Samsung flagship is the best looking display on the market. If you disagree with that, fight me in the comments. The S24 Ultra's camera system is dominated by AI, but there are some other updates that are definitely worth talking about. Now, on the S23 Ultra, we have optical focal lengths of 1, obviously, and then 3, and then 10. I want a 1, a 3 if we have to, and a 5. And that's what we have on the S24 Ultra. Ah, cramp. CES cramp. Ow. So what they've done, basically, is leave the 1 and 3x as they are. They are optical focal lengths using these, these lenses here. Not these ones, but on the S24 Ultra. But they've taken the 10x, that really long focal length, that optical focal length, and they've swapped it for a 5x. So massive thumbs up from me on that. If you shoot video on your smartphone, there's another very important update to the S20 Ultra, which was spotted by my mate Ben from Lover of Tech. Over to you, Ben. Video Pro Mode, UHD, 60, 30, 24, but 120. It's not just on the 1X, but it's also on the ultra wide. It's no crop. No crop, baby. So, 4K 60, you press record, you're able to go to 0.6, which is ultra wide, 1X, 3X, the new dedicated 5X which then uses AI to zoom in at 10x. Of course, if you press and hold, you've got the option of 20x as well. So that's the maximum for zoom. But the trick is, is the fact that you can pause while you're still being able to take pictures. You can flip to the selfie and still take pictures. And if you want to continue recording, it continues recording on a selfie and you can flip back to the rear camera. And that's the camera that can just work in all scenarios, all situations all video recording modes, all frame rate. There's no limit no more. It's like, yeah. <laughs> Go and give Ben a follow. He does amazing camera comparisons. They are just, they, they are the gold standard of camera comparisons. Let's get onto the meat and potatoes of the S24 Ultra, which is AI. According to Samsung, we are now firmly in the era of Galaxy AI, and they've got a lot of credentials to back this up. And it's worth bearing in mind that all of the things I'm about to mention work on the S24, the S24 Plus, and the S24 Ultra. The first is live translation, and the S24 is the first smartphone to offer live two-way translation on a phone. So basically, you make a call to someone who speaks a different language to you, and straight away, they're informed by a recorded message that the entire conversation is being transcribed and translated by AI. And as they start speaking in their native language, the phone automatically translates it for you on the display. And then you reply, and that gets translated for them over the phone. And in terms of security, all of this happens on the device, nothing goes to the cloud, and when you hang up, that conversation is completely erased. There's another feature called Interpreter, which is designed for face-to-face -face translation. So the idea is that you stand there with your phone, and on the screen, it gives you a split screen of the conversation. You can see what you're saying and the person standing in front of you, it's flipped around for them so they can see what you're saying to them. And then as you speak on their side of the screen, your words are translated into their native language and vice versa. Now for someone like me who embarrassingly cannot speak another word in any other language, that looked incredibly useful. Next up we have Chat Assist which is built directly into the Messages app and accessed via the Galaxy AI symbol. That's a symbol you're going to see quite a lot in one UI going forward. And this lets you translate messages into different languages, so it shows you your language above and then just beneath that the language you've translated it into. And if you leave it in translation mode, when you send a new message it will automatically translate it instantly. And again, it's so fast. There's also writing style, which gives you different tone options for messages that you're sending. So if you're sending a message and you just need a bit of help with the tone, you're given loads of different options. Web browsing has been given the AI treatment as well. So for instance, you can translate web pages if you want to, or you can have them summarized. Even the Notes app has had AI injected into it. So for instance, you can auto format notes. It gives you lots of different styles that you can choose from. And the summarize feature has made its way in there as well. So if you've got a massive note, you know, low loads and loads and loads of notes that you need just a few bullet points from. You press a button and bam, there you go. And yes, you guessed it, you can translate those notes in up to 30 different languages. However, one of the coolest AI features that I saw during my hands-on with the S24 
Ultra, although this does work on the S24 and the S24 Plus as well, is Circle to Search. And this is a little thing that's been developed in combination with Google where you can literally circle anything on the screen and find out what it is. So for instance, if your mate's wearing a pair of trainers that you like the look of and you want to find out exactly what they are, you can take a photo of their trainers, circle it with either the S Pen or just your finger, and immediately you're told what it is. I tested this with a bunch of subjects, including my own trainers, and this photo, for instance, well, you can barely see what these trainers are, but it nailed it. And you don't have to take photos for this to work. You can do it on web pages. If you see someone's Instagram post where they've gone on holiday somewhere and you want to know where they are, or you know, if you see a food item on someone's feed and you want to know what that thing is, you just long press the home button, circle it, and within seconds, the phone tells you what it is. And it's stuff like this that is genuinely useful. I can see myself using that all the time. As mentioned earlier, photography has had a big injection of AI as well on the S24 series and there's some very impressive stuff. It's built directly into photo capture so that 10x zoom, the one that is no longer optical, looks as optical as possible thanks to AI processing and some very fancy stuff behind the scenes. Now I didn't really get much time to test that unfortunately but I will be doing that extensively in my full review so if you don't want to miss that make sure you subscribe and hit the bell. But the most impressive AI photo stuff I think comes from the editing. So we now get editing suggestions that all take place on device where you can use AI to erase reflections, erase shadows, add portrait effects and even remove noise. Now we are getting used to this sort of stuff on websites and various apps but having stuff again directly on your phone built into the system itself, built into the operating system, makes a huge difference. Now the stuff that I've just talked about takes place on device, but there is some generative AI that takes place on the cloud, and that was, again, very impressive. I know I keep using the word impressive in this review, but it is, it's genuinely impressive. So for instance, if you take a wonky photo and you need to straighten the horizon, the S24 will do that for you, and it will fill in the gaps, it will guess what the stuff is that is suddenly missing from that frame, and fill it in for you. And again, during that limited testing, it seemed to work very well, but I will be putting it through its paces during that full review. Now, this wouldn't be AI photo editing without the ability to move subjects in the frame, so you can very easily pick up people and dogs and inanimate objects and move them into different areas of the picture. And again, the fill, the generative fill, is very impressive. Ah, I said impressive again. Something else that was very, very, very good was instant slow-mo. And this is when you can take any footage that hasn't been shot in slow motion compatible high frame rates. So if you shot something in 24 frames a second, for instance, and you want to slow it down, you can. And the reason you can is because the S24 can fill in the missing frames. So as it slows the footage down, it can fill in up to 120 frames that aren't there. And for a kid who grew up in the 1980s, this is just absolutely mind-blowing. So we are definitely in the era of Galaxy AI, but what does this mean for Samsung? And more importantly, what does it mean for the competition? Tim, it is over to you. Every year Samsung gets in first because Samsung Unpacked is in January, so they get a head start. But if there was ever a demonstration that iOS and the iPhone needs to be shoved into the era of AI, it is this. Because all of that stuff that I've just shown you on the S24 is impressive, there's that word again, and more importantly, incredibly useful. Now you may not use all of those AI features that I've just talked about, but one of them, just one of them, might be incredibly handy day to day. I can't wait to get the S24 Ultra into this studio for a proper review. So if you don't want to miss that, make sure you subscribe and hit the bell. And also let me know what you think about these new Samsung phones down below. And if you've still got some time, hang around for another video that I think you might find interesting.